this is the uh, the blade that came highly recommended for this saw, and it is uh, made by Forest Manufacturing Company. Uh, let's see if I can get this on camera. So this blade right here, the Woodworker One, it was designed by Mr. Sawdust himself. And if you don't know who that is, let me introduce you. This guy right here, that's Mr. Sawdust. He's the guy behind the DeWalt radial arm saw. And, uh, and he wrote this book. Um, if you don't have it, I would highly recommend getting it because it teaches you everything you need to know about <laughs> setting up this saw and keeping it in top working order. So again, that's the, the Forest Woodworker 1. There's also a Woodworker 2. I guess I don't really know the difference. I didn't uh, look into that one much. Um, but this one is, uh, like I said, it was designed, uh, or Mr. Sawdust helped design it with Forest Manufacturing Company. Uh, that's my understanding anyway. So we're gonna install this blade on here and uh, we're gonna set up the new Mr. Sawdust table that, um, that we made based on the information in that book. So again, if you don't have the book, go get the book. Right, buddy? All right. So the first thing that I did is I took the original table and flipped it over, and from there I could see all of the screw holes and all of the original measurements that my late grandfather had taken. It was kind of cool to see uh, all of his pencil marks and, and everything in the board, knowing that his mind was in the same thought process at one time. I took my grandpa's measurements and I duplicated those onto two new sheets of three quarter inch MDF, 37 inches wide. And I also added three lines for where the, the steel bars were going to go. So with the Mr. Sawdust table, you basically have two sheets of three quarter inch, uh, either MDF or plywood, and you sandwich uh, these steel bars in between so that your table remains really flat and it doesn't flex or bow over time. Now this is really important because if your table isn't completely flat, if it's got some type of bow or warp to it, then uh, all of the, the accuracy and calibration that you do to the machine uh, is basically not gonna do you any good. Um, then your cuts aren't going to be as accurate as they potentially could be if you had a flat table to begin with. So your main goal is to have as flat as a, a, a table as possible and then align the saw to that table. With a little bit thicker steel than what the book calls for. Uh, in my case, I went with, I believe it was 5 16 uh, but honestly, it's probably overkill. Looking good. The book calls for a slow setting epoxy to uh, mount the steel bars into the grooves. And in my case, I went with Hysol 9462, uh, just because it's what I had laying around the shop. I had some uh, extra tubes of it, and the stuff is awesome. I can't speak highly enough about 9462. Love the stuff. The tube that I started with was pretty old, and I ended up running out midway through, so I had to uh, throw another one in the dispenser. Now, if you're wondering why I'm in the kitchen doing all of this, it's because the, the granite countertop was the flattest surface that I could find to do this glue up. And you wanna make sure that whatever surface you do this glue up on, it is absolutely flat. When you do this glue up, you wanna make sure that you don't use too much glue. So as you can see, I'm, I'm trying to use it pretty sparingly. Um, otherwise, you can end up with a hump uh, in various places of your table. I wasn't able to put any clamps on the granite countertop, obviously, so I ended up stealing a couple weights off the John Deere tractor and a couple dumbbells from my wife, and uh, I think it worked out pretty good. My particular saw has a drop leaf on the front of it, um, but 
I didn't end up putting any steel bars inside there. I figured that since it was small enough and it wasn't as critical as the main table, that uh, I would just try to glue it together like normal using some clamps. Uh, I had this piece of angle iron sit sitting around and I figured uh, if I clamped that to it, then maybe it would um, make it stay flat. Uh, but if I had to do this over again, um, I would probably put a steel bar inside there instead and do it the same way that I did the main table because in the end, um, this front drop leaf did have a slight little bow to it. I used a flush trim bit on the router to clean up the edges a little bit since there was just a sliver of an overhang. <laughs> okay, so here's where things got a little interesting. So I took the, the table and I tried to center it on the saw as best as I could. And I took my time and I took uh, my measurements and I flipped it back over and then I compared my lines to the lines that my grandpa had and where his bolt holes were. And it turns out that my grandpa was a little bit more accurate than myself. After I got the brackets mounted to the table and the table back onto the saw, uh, the next step was to level the table in relation to the saw. And there's these bolts on the sides of the brackets that allow you to, to level the table. And you do that by moving the motor around the surface of the table and by using a piece of paper as a feeler gauge so that you can set the exact same uh, height and, and make it level in relation to the saw. The drop leaf actually turned out much nicer than I was expecting. It, it meets the table flush and it works incredibly well. The next step was to mount the sacrificial top to the top of the table. Uh, this is where the blade would get slightly buried into the sacrificial top so that at any point if you need to replace it, you can replace that without having to rebuild your entire Mr. Sawdust table. Uh, so to do that, I ended up using screws and I tried to put screws in strategic locations so that the saw blade wouldn't end up hitting a screw with the most common cuts that you make, being the standard cross cut and a 45 degree cut. Earlier I mentioned that I had just a slight bow in the drop leaf. And you can see that a little bit uh, on the edges of the drop leaf where it meets up with the main table. It's just slightly below the main table on the edges, but in the center, it's absolutely flush. It was time to cut a kerf into the new sacrificial top. And while I was concentrating on the saw blade, I completely forgot that my dust collection hose was behind the blade. <laughs> The book talks about several different tests that you can run to check the accuracy of your calibration. And I got to say, after everything is calibrated correctly, this thing is deadly accurate. And I'm super, super impressed. Um, also impressed with the adjustability of everything. So there's basically three main points uh, on this saw that you have to adjust. Uh, one is for the arm on the back. Uh, there's a couple little Allen screws that you can um, screw out and then uh, use a flathead screwdriver to uh, to move the position of, um, I don't know what you call it, but that there's an arm that kind of goes down so you can lock it into 90 degrees or 45 degrees, etc. And you can sort of move that to fine tune it. So that's sort of the first step uh, that they talk about in the book. And then also uh, on the front of the saw, you can adjust the uh, uh, your blade to the table to make it a perfect 45 or I'm sorry, a perfect uh, 90 degrees. And then there's further adjustments on the back of the motor where, or maybe it's considered the side of the motor. Um, there's further fine tune adjustments where you can adjust the toe and the heel of the blade. And so uh, it's all explained in the book, get the book and uh, go through those details and uh, you will be very, very happy if you have one of these saws. 
So in my next video, I'm going to attempt to bank a dust collection box for this saw. And I've seen some really cool ideas out there. So I'm gonna uh, take a couple of those and uh, build a dust collection box that picks up the dust more from the kerf of the saw blade instead of trying to pick it up uh, behind the saw in a big box. Uh, if that doesn't really make sense, if you're interested, um, subscribe and check out the next video that, that I post and, uh, and you'll see how I did it. Thanks for watching.